engineering Newswire, we're microwaving rubble, expanding access to space, designing elastic OLEDs, and flying Tinker Toys to space. NASA and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security are working together on a portable radar device that can help find you if you're ever trapped under a pile of rubble. Well, hopefully not all rubble. The prototype is called FINDER, a surprisingly relevant and accurate acronym that stands for Finding Individuals for Disaster and Emergency Response. FINDER can locate people buried under 30 feet of crushed materials and even 20 feet of solid concrete. It works by beaming microwave radar signals into the debris and analyzing the signal patterns that bounce back. Based on remote sensing radar technology developed by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, NASA's Deep Space Network actually uses it to keep tabs on spacecraft. In disaster scenarios, the use of radar signals can be particularly complex because earthquakes and tornadoes produce twisted and shattered wreckage. Typically, the radar signals are tangled and hard to decipher, but the team tapped JPL's expertise in data processing to develop advanced algorithms that can isolate the tiny signals from a person's moving chest. Similar technology has the potential to remotely monitor astronaut vital signs in future human missions to space. There are various challenges associated with current satellite launch vehicles, such as expensive operation, limited resources, and lengthy pre-planning. To help address these challenges, DARPA has come up with a new experimental space program, XS-1, which aims to develop a fully reusable, unmanned vehicle that would provide aircraft-like access to space. DARPA claims there will be no need for an expensive infrastructure and envisions the vehicle to operate from a clean pad with a small ground crew. With this kind of setup, routine daily operations and flights from a wide range of locations would be possible and the deployment of small satellites would be faster and more affordable. DARPA also claims how this kind of program will demonstrate technology for next generation space and hypersonic flight for both government and commercial users. Organic light emitting diode technology is already used throughout the consumer electronics industry, but this stretchable OLED material has the potential to shatter what we thought possible with our electronics. UCLA researchers have created a transparent elastic OLED that has the potential to make displays like windows, cell phone screens expandable, electronics wearable, and medical tools less invasive. With a single layer of an electroluminescent polymer blend, the material could be used in conjunction with stretchable thin film transistors that are being developed to create a fully stretchable OLED display. The polymer blend is sandwiched between two transparent elastic composite electrodes, which are made of a network of nanowires placed in a polymer. The researchers have shown the ability to not only make a single block of light flexible, but also make a rubbery OLED with multiple pixels. By assembling a cross-hatched pattern with the silver nanowire-based electrodes, they created one layer of columns and one layer of rows for the pixels. So, this could help your high-def TV get more high-def, as it could pave the way for displays with thousands of pixels. <laughs> 1080. Low-res junk. MIT is revolutionizing the way airplanes, spacecraft, and even larger structures are being assembled with their lightweight structure that can be snapped together like Tinker Toys. And who doesn't like playing with Tinker Toys? This cellular composite material is 10 times stiffer for a given weight than existing ultralight materials and can easily be reassembled and disassembled. You know, kind of like this. This is Sparta! According to MIT researchers, the individual parts can be mass-produced and assembled into wings, airplane fuselages, bridges, or rockets. The possibilities are endless. The new modular system tends to fail incrementally, meaning it's more reliable and can easily be repaired. With the possibility of linking multiple types of parts, a new degree of design freedom is available when it comes to composite manufacturing. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll feature them in the next episode. For PD&D TV, I'm Megan Zippa, and this has been your Engineering Newswire.